Jerusalem, the city of truth. What does God call Jerusalem today? Let's go to Revelation chapter 11 because the two witnesses are on the scene. And they preached for three and a half years the exact time that Jesus preached back in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. Was it then a city of truth? They rejected the one that represented truth. So history repeats itself. They're coming on the scene soon. And we'll pick it up here in Revelation 11.7. And when they, the two witnesses, have completed their testimony, 3.5 years, the beast who ascends out of the, the abyss will make war against them and will overcome them and will kill them. And their bodies will lie in the street of the great city where spiritually, we're talking about the great city Jerusalem, is called Sodom and Egypt. Brethren, we are are to become Jerusalem spiritually in truth. Here, it says that the physical city is represented by Sodom and Egypt. This is alarming. And where also our Lord was crucified. History repeats itself. Now, that's called that then. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah was warning the people of Jew, Jews, Judah, and they were a rebellious people. Look at this parallel. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who carry out a plan. They always got a plan, right? To do away with God's holy days. That's their plan. It says, but not of me. And who form an alliance, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. What's a parallel verse to that? Revelation 18, verse 5. Her sins have reached heaven. Sin to sin, multiplying. Those who set out to go down to Egypt, that, that spiritual city called Egypt that we came out of. And here they want to go back. They forgot that, right? And have not asked at my mouth to take refuge in the stronghold. That's what they did of Pharaoh. Who does Pharaoh represent? Satan himself. And who's inside the beast? Satan. And to seek shelter in the shadow of Egypt. The shadow of lies. Deceit. They went back. This is a warning to the church. Many have, brethren. Let's pick it up here, and we will go to verse 9. That this is a rebellious people. They're re rebelling against God, the God of truth. Lying children, there it is. Are we seeing this today in our world? Lies that are about? Read Isaiah 5. They call what's good evil. They call light darkness. And they call darkness the light. Completely flip-flopped, topsy-turvy. It says here, they are children who will not hear the law of the Lord. Now, we know in Psalm 119, 142, it says, your law is the truth. Do you believe that? It says, who say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things or truthful things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy illusions. Isn't that what we just went through? A big giant illusion, didn't we? It's all on truth in a system that's based upon Egypt, now called Babylon and I'll emphasize the great. It's the great illusion that Satan is the head magician. And he has his spells that the people buy into. You're supposed to buy in, Prover in Proverbs the truth. Sell it not. Well, they're selling it. And that's why the city in the end, Jerusalem, is called Egypt. And also Sodom. And it's sad because they're not leading by God's spirit. 
which is a spirit of truth. It leads you into truth. I want to go to 2 Timothy 4. Go to 2 Timothy 4. And listen up. You're hearing the words of God. And that's why we have services to steer us up because the untruth can come in and it can grab us. It can give us bribes. It can drag us back into Egypt and destroy us. And then it's too late to listen to the sermon. So have an open ear in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge you therefore in the sight of God, even the Lord Jesus Christ, who is ready to judge the living. Now check this out. And the dead, it gives two time stamps. It says, at his appearing, we know that is the seventh trumpet, Pentecost. That's the second harvest. Because Jesus was already harvested. He is the barley. This is the wheat. Those that love truth. They smile at truth. They're excited about truth. They love his appearing as a verse. They love truth. And they're ready for his appearing. How about you? And then it says, and his kingdom. That's another judgment at the great white throne judgment. You ever notice this in scripture? That's the last harvest of tabernacles, the ingathering of souls. Preach the word, preachers. He's talking to who? Timothy. He's a young man learning to be an elder. He says, preach the word of what? Truth. Be urgent in season and out of season. Convict, rebuke, encourage with all patience and doctrine. That's truth. For there shall come a time, now are, is the time, when they will not tolerate sound doctrine. But according to their own lust, this is the church. Yes, the world does it. But the church, sadly, is a microcosm of the world. It needs to come out of her. And it says, shall accumulate to themselves a great number of teachers. Where's that location? Right here, brethren. Right here. Do you realize that? I want to stir you up today with the words of God. Do you realize they're sitting right at God's pulpits right now and the congregations are wanting to hear on truths, to be comfortable, relaxed. Instead of stirred up by Jesus, do you think Jesus just spoke soft words? He spoke words of power that cut asunder into the bone and marrow. Those are the words of truth. And the ones that don't like it, they love on truth. So listen up. This is our time today. Why? But according to their own lust, they shall accumulate to themselves a great number of teachers having ears, itching to hear what satisfies their cravings. And they shall turn away their own ears from what? From New Jerusalem, the city of truth. They turn their ears from hearing the message of the good shepherd, that God speaks through. And it says, and they shall be turned aside onto myths. You know what myths are? That's fiction. Make believe. So this is what's happening. The two witnesses, it shows what the platform is. They're preaching to Sodom and Egypt. And guess what? They don't like it. And they exchange gifts when their bodies are laying in the streets. They're excited that they died. We killed the truth. Because they are living in darkness. That's why they call darkness light and light darkness. Do you see it, brethren? So that sets the stage of the sermon. We are living in these times. We should be sober. And it's also exciting. We're living in biblical times. What are we going to do? We have two choices like Adam and Eve. Represent the truth, that's Jesus, or represent Satan and the lie. The choice is yours, brethren. Now let's go to the scripture that says the city is a city of truth. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 8 and let's read this awesome scripture in verse 3. Thus says the Lord, he speaks through the prophet, I have returned to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. That's right in the middle. 
Now, this is duality. We have a physical Israel, and we have a spiritual one. And we read here, And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Shall be called. Right now, it's called Sodom and Egypt. What are they doing right now on the Holy Sabbath day? Are they keeping God's words of truth? No, they have been blinded. That's why Jesus, through the apostle Peter and Paul, went to the Gentiles. They rejected truth. They rejected the Messiah. And he's supposed to be in the midst of Jerusalem. So it's a city of truth. And it says, and will dwell there. And the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts. What do mountains represent? Governments. Governments. What kind of government is this? Holy mountain. Are the governments of this world holy? Remember what the Apostle John said in his epistle. There's never no lie in the truth. The governments are built upon lies of this world, but not God's. So the new Jerusalem ultimately goes to the new earth into the mountain. Jerusalem's a city on a hill. It's on a mountain. It all represents the establishment of holiness. And it can only be in truth, just like you were established in Christ. So we read the scripture. Now let's go to Revelation 2.1. Because who is in the midst of the church? Now, in Revelation 2, verse 1, we have the angel who delivered this to John the Apostle. And the angel of the Ephesian church, that's the first church of the seven candlesticks, right? These things says he who holds the seven stars, those are seven angels, In his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven lampstands or seven churches. He's in the middle of the church. The truth is in the middle of the church. I know your works, he says. Now, this represents all the Apostle Paul, the Apostles, Mary, all them in the first stage. It went all the way to about 150 A.D. Then you had the next one, Smyrna, start. So he's talking to Ephesus. And he says, I know your works and your labor and your endurance and that you cannot bear those who are evil. If there's any evil in the church, they want it out. And it says, and that they did test those who proclaim themselves to be apostles. I never noticed this before. Watch this. They are saying, we're going to be one of the foundations. The apostles, or just like right under them, claiming to be the apostles, they're charlatans. And it says they recognized them, they test them, who proclaim themselves to be apostles but are not, and did find them liars. They're not representing the Jerusalem above, the truth, the city of truth. That's golden, right? So they recognized them and they get an applaud by God on this. How about your congregation? Do you recognize evil if it creeps in? God can allow it if you allow it. And we have three and that they have borne much and have endured and in my name's sake have labored and have not grown weary. They're not dead, brethren. Nevertheless, I have this against you. Uh Uh-oh. There's a connection here. That you have left your first love. They lost their excitement for what? The truth. You were been set free. You're so excited when you're first called, right? Wow, you're there. They're the first one sitting. You're ready. You're smiling. You're just wanting to hear the words of God. You're excited to share it with others. But somehow through time, you become mundane. <sighs> Boring. I heard that before. Not good. They've lost it. God's words are exciting. Now, they recognize the charlatans, right? 
What they were rejecting was Nicolaitans. You ever heard of that term? There's a few church candlesticks that despise Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans is this. One who's in a position of authority and rules over you, lords over you. They merchandise the brethren. Can you say Pharisees? Ephesus had this problem and they rejected it. The new covenant church rejected what the church became, the Laodicea of the Old Testament. There were seven candlesticks in the Old Testament. The Pharisees and scribes represented Laodicea. Then it launched to the new one, Ephesus. Brethren, we're in seven now. Christ is about to return, just like he did back then. And we're in Laodicea now, where you have Nicolaitans lording over the brethren for merchandising, and they shut out the kingdom of truth. They don't talk about new Jerusalem above. They talk about the physical one. And we'll learn about that more and more. We must be set free with the law of truth. Now, I want to go to Ephesians 2. Very vital. Ephesians 2, because it says Jerusalem is the city of truth. Correct? Well, who's Jerusalem? Ephesians chapter 2. I want to begin here in verse 19. So then, you, that's the church, are no longer aliens and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of the household of God. Remember Jacob, he said, I saw the household of God after the ladder. He peeked in and he saw a glimpse of truth, the new Jerusalem. Now, what is this? You are being built up. Where? On the foundation of the apostles. There's 12 of them. They're all under Jesus, the chief capstone. And prophets are next. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building, the church, or the new Jerusalem, hence Revelation 21, I then John saw new Jerusalem, adorned as a bride. There it is. We are new Jerusalem in the making. Is increasing, see? Now notice this. Don't forget this. Into what? A holy temple in the Lord. Remember at the end, there's no need of a temple, like a physical one? Because we become it. We're part of the new Jerusalem, the first fruits, the kings and priests. Hence, king of kings. Let the truth resonate. It's the truth from above in New Jerusalem. And it comes down. And it's only listened to and understood by those with a willing heart. That Jesus of truth is inside them. And they're being built up in whom you also are being built together. That's 144,000 strong. That's perfect government. 12 is perfect government. 12 times 12 established. It says, for a habitation of God. In the spirit. What's the spirit? The spirit of what? Of truth. That's Psalm 119. So we establish New Jerusalem is the city of truth. It's also a nation called Israel. And that is being built up. And it started with the 12 apostles under Christ. And the father is of it all. Now let's go to Ephesians later to Ephesians 6, 11. Now, this is the armor of God chapter. Why am I bringing you here? It says in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. What if I don't? Okay, then you're going to be destroyed by these clever, deceitful demons that have been around a lot longer than yourself. They're clever. So you got to put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand. Ah, who stands in the middle of the church? Jesus. To stand against the wiles of the devil because we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age. A bunch of liars. Against the spiritual power of wickedness in high places. They're in our country leaders, high places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to resist 
in the evil day. Aren't you supposed to pray that every day in the model prayer? It says, and having worked out all things to what? To stand. Stand where? In truth. Now, what piece of armor is this? Stand therefore having your loins, that's your gut, that's everything, that's where the serotonin is produced, that make you feel good. And it says, girded about with truth. Don't buy into the lies. Otherwise, in Philippians, you're leading by your belly. And we're living in a world where it's blowing up. And it happened before. It happened in Rome. It happened in Pompeii. They just literally blew up because that's what they were leading their lives with. We are to lead with the Spirit of God of truth down there. And let that resonate in our hearts and mind, truth. We are set free, brethren. And it says, stand therefore having the belt of truth. It's right there in the middle of your armor. In the midst of the church is the truth, Jesus Christ. Making a connection here? Now, I want to go to John 14. Let's listen to the red letters. John chapter 14. Are you getting stirred up? Yes. We should be amplified. We should be inspired because the dead know nothing. Zippo, you are alive right now and your opportunity is right now. And we should listen in and let's listen to John 14. And we will have here in verse 1 through 6. Powerful. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there it is again, New Jerusalem, are many dwelling places. 144,000 says these are the first fruits. It says, if it were otherwise, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself so that where I am, you may also be. And that's hence Revelation 14, the first fruits, 144,000. Follow the lamb wherever he goes. Sounds like a marriage to me, right? That's what's going to happen. And where I am going, you know, and the way you know. Now, Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How then can we know the way? Here it comes. I am the way, Jesus says, and the truth and the life. He is truth. Remember Pilate? Truth was standing right there. What is truth? Another way to look at it is, where's this city of truth? It doesn't exist, but it does. And it's way up there in another realm. Are you in tune Listen up. So we have Jesus as the truth, and he stands in the middle of the church, which is New Jerusalem. And we are to stand as his right hand, together as one, forever following him into the ages of eternity, representing true ambassadors of peace on the new earth. I want to go to John 8. Let's go to John 8, verse 43. Why don't you understand my speech? Because you cannot bear to hear my words, because they were living in untruths. You are of your father, the devil, and you're the lust of your father you desire to practice. Notice that word. Like a musician practices scales, right? He was a murderer from the beginning and has not stood in the truth. Interesting. He's supposed to stand in the truth as a servant of God. But he chose not to, and his tail took one-third of all the rest of the angels that no longer stand in the truth. They left their estate, which represented truth. So he doesn't stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Is there truth in Jesus? Is he inside you? Then that means there's truth in you. Whenever he speaks a lie, he's speaking from his own self. That's why anyone lies. Any sin committed will create a lie. 
to support that lie. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you can convict me of sin? But if I speak the truth, why don't you believe it? Now, we know Satan is the polar opposite of Jesus. In fact, he goes into the man of sin and he says, I am God. He is, I am truth in the city of truth. That's called Sodom right there in Egypt, right? You ever look at it that way? It's pretty incredible, huh? So there's, he's a counterfeit. They call that a charlatan. He looks like a lamb, hmm, but he's not. He's deceiving the whole world, Revelation 12, 9. So he does stand somewhere. What city does he stand in? Babylon the Great. He is the beast. He's inside the beast in the middle of his soul. See? So he's in the middle deceiving the world. And we eventually have here Babylon is in the making right now, which it all seems to be pointing to the biggest deceitful nation of all. We, the people of the United States of America, look at how we are. Are we physically like Laodicea? When we say put on the mask, the whole world bows. When we say jump, the world jumps. Correct? And out of the sea of many nations and people will come the beast. So wake up and see. Don't be deceived by these untruths. So we are told in Revelation 18.4, come out of her. It's a process. It's very influential. And so... Let's go back to verse 31 here of John 8. Verse 31. And we read here, Therefore Jesus said to the Jews who had believed. Now these are the good guys. If you continue in my words, see, you have to continue. It's not a once save all thing. Poof. See, that's part of the lie. That's untrue. It says, are truly my disciples. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. From what? From the grasp of Satan, the Pharaoh in Egypt. We are to never look back, as Moses says to Pharaoh, you'll never see my face again. He said that. They answered him, we are Abraham's seed and have never been in bondage to anyone. They're deceived. It's funny. Rome has them right at that moment. That's how deceptive Satan is but yet they're set free. No. So listen, Jesus said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a servant of sin. So I have 1 John 3, 8, the one who practices sin is of the devil. In other words, you don't get up seven times. You stay down and practice that. And that is awful. That leads to darkness. And that's what they were doing. So Babylon citizens are servants of sin. The citizens of Jerusalem are servants to righteousness, as Paul wrote. It's a play on words. We want to be servants of righteousness. But really, we're set free. So there's always the physical, the tassel wearing, the touching of the wall, Right? The Pharisees, as, as they came out, let, look at me, the physical. Then there's the spiritual, where Jesus had no beauty in him physically. But he spoke truth. He represented truth. Now that's spiritual. There's these two. One's untrue and one's true. Where is this in Scripture? In many places. Let's go to one. Galatians 4. Now, it's flat out here in the Bible, but yet so many so-called Christians follow this physical one. And we read in Galatians 4, verse 22, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, the two ways, 
one by the maidservant, that's Hagar, and one by the free woman. Now, on the one hand, he who came from the maidservant was born according to the flesh. That's physical, right? But on the other hand, he who came from the free woman, that was good old Sarah, was born according to the promise. Now, what's a promise? The future, right? Of the new Jerusalem. So you have two. Which things are allegorical? All that was a type. Because these are the two covenants. Two covenants. One good and one bad. It says, the one from Mount Sinai, which is Hagar, is engendering bondage. That means offspring. It's like going to produce bondage. We just read the truth will set you free. So you have these nations have come out of Ishmael, who had 12 sons, and they worship the physical. And they're in bondage and they don't know it. Deceived. Because the Mount Sinai covenant is likened to Hagar in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, you know, the one called Sodom in Egypt. The one that people are touching the wall. What are they really touching? It's really a mindset of physical. It will only get them as far as our atmosphere. Then you burn up. The Van Buren belt, whatever that's called. And she is in bondage with her children. Okay, now here's the word but. This is the, the second covenant, the good one. But the Jerusalem above, that has to be New Jerusalem, right? Is free, which is the mother of us all. We're in the womb, the saints, of New Jerusalem, the city of truth. See the difference? So really, the mother of truth. It's all represented in truth. Now that is completely beautiful. We have been set free. Now what are you doing with your freedom? Many have been set free. Now, look, at, look at the so-called prodigal son. Oh, did he think he was free? I can do whatever I want, right? What did he do with his freedom? He lived a life, he practiced sin. And he really, he was in bondage until he returned to the second covenant and received freedom. And he's accepted by his father. He finally gave in to the truth, not living a lie. I want to go back to Zechariah 8 where we read the city of truth. I'm going to read verses 7 and 8 because the first fruits dwell in the middle as well. Zechariah 8, 7 says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people. Notice where? From the east country and from the west country. I just thought of a parallel right now. When we return with Christ, it says it will all start with the Jews. The Gentiles will, 10 of men will go on to his, their skirt. Teach us your way. Teach us. We've been failures for history. Teach us. Right? Well, once that's established, it says it, says it will take a day, is a year in prophecy, that waters will go from the east and west. Look at that. And it will start, it starts in Jerusalem. The truth starts in Jerusalem with the Jews, physically, and then it goes in throughout the millennium. I believe it takes a year. It's established. And you have to understand that because later in Revelation, it says that in the new earth, that the rivers will go out. So it starts with the new Jerusalem, city of truth, all the way to the other nations, which have an opportunity to enter its gates. And we're going to end with that. But for now, we'll read this verse, 8, and I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Now, this has to be the first fruits. They're the ones with middle name, interesting, in the middle, is New Jerusalem. What does the counterfeit have? The lie. The mother of harlots. We just read that New Jerusalem above is the mother of us all. That's our middle name. See, there's a counterfeit. Here's the 144,000, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in what? In what, brethren? 
in truth and in righteousness. We have been set free. And let's now go to verse 9. I love this. Listen up. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Those are all the angels. Let your hands be strong, not weak. You who hear as in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, that in the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts is laid. We know Christ and the 12 apostles, right? The temple is to be built. Now, physically, when he wrote this, it was in 516 BC, Ezra came with Nehemiah and they rebuilt the physical temple. And then later in 70 AD, we know that one was destroyed with Herod. Then they're going to rebuild another one. Read it. It's in Revelation 11. Yes. And then the beast actually stands, the man of sin, in the holy place, saying, I am truth. That's what he says. I am God. But he's not. It's a big lie. We already talked about this. But these are all representations of what? What did Paul say in Corinthians? He says, don't you know that your bodies are a temple? What do we read in Ephesians 2? You're being built up into what? A holy temple? So that's the temple that's being built. That will last forever. Truth will last forever. All the others are representatives, representations, like a model. So I thought that was wonderful. Let's now go to verse 16. It says, these are the things that you shall do. And meanwhile, this is what you sh this should be your plan as a Christian. Listen up. Each man speak the truth. Do you? You should represent the truth to his neighbor, to love your neighbor. That means you got to do this. You got to look up, away from, down there, whatever you're looking at. See people that are walking by because this life is not about you. You have to understand when you go visit anyone, you're at the table and you have your phone out, just like out here, and it beep, beep, ling, ling, and you look in right away, that person is not important to you. Who's the most important person in that room right then? Yourself with your little gadget and your connections. Put that away. Unless you're studying the Bible or looking up something within the conversation piece. Otherwise, say, I'm sorry, I got to leave now. Anyone that constantly leaves situations, they don't want to be with you. If you had Jesus Christ right in front of you, would you have your phone out? I'd have it on silent mode, put it aside, and lean in, right? Because we want truth. We want to represent truth. We want to love our neighbor. So this is the instructions. Listen up. It continues right here. In verse 16, it says, Each man speak the truth to his neighbor, execute the judgment of truth, and peace in your gates. Now it starts here. Proverbs talks about our body is like a city. We can only control what goes in and what goes out. So we have to practice that now. And until one day we'll represent, we'll be literal, literally New Jerusalem. We already represent it. So you know the saying, if a son goes out and he does something bad, he wrecks the family's name. Well, you have three names. New Jerusalem is in the middle. And let no one imagine evil in your heart against his neighbor. And do not love a false oath. That's a lie. That's why Babylon's based upon lies. Why am I getting taxed for this? <laughs> why, why? That's a big lie. It's built upon a system of lies. For all these things that I hate, says the Lord. Why? Because he's living, sitting on a throne in the city of truth. Do you want to sit alongside Jesus Christ, be given a palace of truth, and everything you'll do, the judgments and the management of angels, will be done in truth? and in righteousness. This is the city of truth that should be on your mind. And in Matthew 6, the model prayer, it says first, our Father and gives location in heaven, your kingdom come. You could ask for the city of truth. 
So have that on your mind, brethren. And I want to end with one last scripture. Let's go to the prophet Isaiah 26, verse 1. In that day, this song, wow, this is called the song of salvation, by the way, shall be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Strong, why? Because it has truth. He sets up salvation as our walls and banks. Open the gates so that the righteous nation shall enter in one that is faithfully keeping truth. Brethren, we have been called to the city of truth and we will be established there. And when those gates open, all where those living waters go east to west, all around that new earth, the nations will come to that city of truth. Why? Because they bought the truth. <laughs>